Hi guys, welcome back again to Birdronix TV. In this video, we will talk about the step response of an RL circuit. Then we'll see how does the voltage and current waveform plot looks like at the charging and discharging phase. We will use the series RL circuit with a switch configuration that will allow us to have force input which will determine our charging pace. The next one is the pre-wheeling response and in this case we are disconnected from the source and the energy stored to the inductor will be our source to the circuit. We call it discharging pace. Given these two conditions of force input and pre-wheeling response, let's find the equation that will relate the output and input of the RL circuit with the step input. So we don't know yet the output waveform or response. It could be linear, exponential, or etc. Let's start with the force input. Let's assume at the time less than zero, the RL circuit is not yet connected. But the time equals zero, where we turn on the switch, we will assume an initial condition that the current in the circuit is equivalent to I0. To proceed, we will do the KVL. With a given current direction and polarity of each element, we will use the entry point to determine the voltage polarity across each element by doing the KVL. You will see in here that B in has an entry point on its negative polarity, so it's negative B in and positive on our inductor voltage and positive entry point also on our resistor voltage and we will equate that to zero. Because by KVL, the summation of the voltages on a closed loop should be equal to zero. To continue rearranging our equation, we have sum of the inductor and resistor voltage equal to the input. Then we will use the inductor voltage formula L di dt and substitute it to our B sub L. And for the voltage across resistor, it is nothing but our current multiplied with the resistor equal to V in. And next is we will divide both sides of the equation by L so that we can cancel the L in front of the di dt. And by doing this, we will end up by having the standard form of the first order linear differential equations. Now we can use this known form of solution for the first order linear differential equation, which we have in here dy dx plus p of x into y equal to the q of x. And we will use the integrating factor i sub x equal to e raised to the integral of the p of x dx. And we can have our final solution for y equivalent to 1 by the integrating factor multiplied with the integral of our q of x i x dx plus constant. So using that non-solution pattern for the differential equation, we will have our p of t equivalent to r by l and q of t equivalent to b in by l. For the integrating factor, we will have i sub x equivalent to e raised to the integral of p of t dt. Then we will have e raised to the integral of r by l into dt and evaluating that we will have e raised to the ratio of r by l times t. Now using our integrating factor and q of t into our final solution, we will have our inductor current which is equivalent to 1 by the integrating factor multiplied with the integral of our b in by l times the integrating factor into dt plus a constant. Evaluating the integral, we will have b in by l into our integrating factor divided by the ratio of our r by l. Then we can cancel the l. And furthermore, if we multiply inside the bracket, the term 1 over the integrating factor you will see that I can cancel it on the first term so that we will be left by the ratio of b in by r 
plus constant over e raised to r by l into t. Then, by transposing this denominator e term into the numerator, we will have our positive exponent to become negative. To find the value of the constant c, let's evaluate at time equal to 0 because that is the time where the constant c will have its maximum value. Okay, at time equal to 0, our constant c is equivalent to the current at time equal to 0 minus our b in by r or the input current. Okay, substituting back the value of our constant into our equation, we will have the inductor current equivalent to the b in by r plus the quantity current at time equal to 0 minus b in by r multiplied with e raised to the negative r by l into t. This is what we call the general equation for the current through the inductor and the resistor of a series RL circuit. I will just use uh, I in equivalent to V in all over R and my I not equivalent to the current at time equal to zero. In this general equation, when I not is equal to zero, we will reduce our equation into I sub L equal to the input current multiplied with the quantity one minus E raised to negative r by l into t. In here, you will observe that we have a decay function in the form of e raised to negative t all over tau, which is equivalent to e raised to negative r by l into t. And in here, we can have our tau equivalent to the ratio of l by r. So now that we are done with the current equation, what about the voltage across the inductor? We will just use the formula B sub L is equals to L di dt and by differentiating our inductor current, we will have our voltage across the inductor equivalent to our input voltage multiplied to E raised to the negative R by L into T. Now that we have our charging current and voltage equation, I have prepared a table to get the expected output at time less than zero, time equal to zero, time equal to infinity, and time greater than zero but less than infinity. Please remember guys that our exponential term at time equal to zero is just equal to one, and at time equal to infinity, it will be equal to zero. Okay, let's populate the table. At time less than zero, both current and voltage is equal to zero. At time equal to zero, the current is zero which makes sense because the inductor does not allow abrupt change in current, let's say with the step input. At time equal to infinity, current will have a maximum value because the inductor in here is just like a short and only the resistor is controlling our current. So for time in between zero and infinity, we will just have our formula for us to get the output current. Now for the voltage, at time equal to zero, exponential term is just equal to one, therefore our inductor voltage is equal to our input voltage. At time equal to infinity, this exponential term will decay to zero, therefore our BL is equal to zero. At time between zero and infinity, it will just follow our formula for the voltage of the inductor. For the example, I have also prepared an RL circuit that has a time constant of one. And of course, the easiest way is to have a one Henry and one ohm resistor in series. This is just for the sake of our demonstration. I have also table in here to see and tabulate how much time we need to reach the steady state from a transient response. They said it is 5 tau and let us see if it is true. Also, we will use this plotter to see the looks of the voltage and current on transient to steady state. With checking up how much in terms of percentage of the maximum voltage and current, it will decrease or increase with the interval of 1 tau. The goal is to see if at pipe time constant, it is a good assumption for a time needed to reach the steady state. So let's start at time equal to zero. 
we will have zero current and maximum voltage as you can see here in the plotter. And at 1 tau, we will have an increase of current about 63% from zero value and the voltage decreases from maximum to only 36.79% of its uh, maximum value. For 2 tau, the current increases 86.47% and the voltage continue to drop at 13.53% from its original value. And now, on 3 tau, we have 95.02% and 4.98% only on the voltage. At 4 tau, current at 98.17% of the maximum value, the voltage decreases to only 1.83% of the maximum value. And at 5 tau, we have current at 99.33%, almost equal to the input current, and the voltage decreases to only 0.67%. In here, we can therefore say that at 5 tau, it is a good time interval to assume that we reach the steady state from a transient response. So guys, that is all about the charging phase with the forced input. Now let's go and find out a voltage and current at the discharging phase. In this condition, we are in the pre-wheeling state. We will use again the general formula for the current in the RL circuit. With the input disconnected, our I-in will be zero. And we will be left with whatever inductor current we have that will also serve as our initial current i naught at the time of step. Therefore, our current equation for the discharging phase is equal to I sub L equal to the I naught E raised to the negative R by L into T. Okay, let's assume that we are in the steady state before the start of the prewheeling and it means the time has passed equal or greater than 5 time constant. Therefore, at the time equal to 0 or time of step, our initial condition will be equivalent to the maximum current that can flow into our circuit, equivalent to B in all over R. Then our current equation will become this formula. Then our inductor voltage will be LDI dt. And by differentiating our current formula, we will have this L into derivative of B in all over R times e raised to the negative r by l into t. And by eliminating those like terms, we will end up with our discharging voltage across the inductor equivalent to negative of input voltage multiplied with e raised to the r by l into t. So guys, that is the formula for the current and voltage for the discharging phase. You will notice that both in discharging and charging phase, our current has both positive signs and it means the current does not change its direction. On the other hand, our voltage on the charging phase is positive in polarity, but you will observe in the discharging it has a negative polarity. It means that there is a reversal in voltage polarity. And it is one of the characteristics of the inductor that it does not allow the change in the direction of current, but it does allow a reversal in voltage polarity across the inductor. Okay, for the discharging phase, uh, based on the derived current and voltage formula, we will again uh, evaluate it at time equal to zero, time equal to infinity, and time between zero and infinity. At time equal to zero, we will have both the current and voltage in its maximum value. At time equal to infinity, they are both decaying to zero, and at time Greater than zero but less than infinity, we will just follow the decaying exponential term. Let us do the same exercise as what we did in the charging phase. And now from the maximum value, let us see in the discharging phase that after 5 tau, from the maximum value of the inductor current, it is safe to assume that we are fully discharged. So guys, what you will observe in here is that we both started on their maximum values only that the voltage started from its negative peak. They are both decaying to zero, meaning to say we are at discharging pace. After 5 tau, we only have 0.67% of their maximum value 
and it means it is safely to assume that at 5 tau we are fully discharged. Okay guys, I think that's all for the RL circuit step response. Before we end this video, I just want to give you a summary of what we have discussed. First is we have completed the formula derivation of the response analysis of RL circuit for the step input. Second is observe that at 5 time constant, it is the needed time to assume we are in the steady state from the transient state. Realize that in charging state, at the step input, the inductor is open and will act as shorted at the time greater than 5 time constant. Voltage at maximum and current equal to 0 at the time of step input. Voltage equivalent to 0 and current at maximum at the time of 5 time constant during charging state. Realize that in the discharging state of the inductor, voltage and current both decays to zero. Current does not change its direction but it is the voltage that changes its polarity. And that is all for this video for the RL circuits. Okay guys, that's all for this video and thank you for your support to Gartronics TV. Remember, electronics is made easy with ECE. Bye!